The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Techie Webinar Series. How I endeavor to empower techies. We believe sharing of knowledge is key to enhance our skills and grow us as a professional. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts who give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is predictive analytics using Hadoop. In our panel today, we have two guest speakers. Our very first guest speaker is Mr. Raghun Swaliam. He is lead business architect at OSSQ. And our second speaker is Mr. Anwar Dutta. And he will today introduce all of us, all of us about OSSQ. So without any further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Anwar. Hi, uh, thanks Gaurav and thanks to um, everybody for taking time out of your uh, schedule for this webinar. Uh, I will uh, uh, take a uh, little time of yours in introducing OSS Cube uh, and then I will pass it on to Raghavan to start the webinar. OSS Cube uh, is a leading global open source software focused company providing an integrated value chain of services um, and encompassing outsourced software product development product customization and implementation consulting and training services on open source product and technologies. Uh, we have principal locations spread across North America, UK and media uh, and India. When it comes to uh, specific to Hadoop, uh, we have dedicated Hadoop practice uh, uh, with partnership. Uh, we, we are the um, cloud era training partners for last uh, four years and we are uh, their partners. We have been doing trainings in Cloudera for last four years. We have trained around 600 plus uh, people in Cloudera developer administration data analyst uh, stream. We are also the AWS advanced consulting partner. This is very important because when most of the organizations tend to start with Hadoop, they want to start with the AWS instance. So we have both AWS competency and as well as the Hadoop competency. Over to the next slide, uh, uh, one thing which separates OSS Cube uh, from the other organization is that we have got a broad set of competencies, but our greatest strength and basically what separates us from other open source solution providers is the ability to integrate many application and open source product into a solution that can help you to meet organization business objectives and differentiate uh, uh, customers from their competition. We basically uh, have a goal to become a trusted advisor for our clients and help them drive innovation and constantly improve the customer experience uh, while streamlining their business processes and improving productivity. And if you can see in the spread uh, in the presentation, uh, we are the platinum partner for Sugar CRM, we are the partner for talent, and we are the only partner for talent in entire India, India and Asia Pacific. We are the cloud referring partners, uh, we are partners with Magento. So, uh, and this gives an example how we come up with the integrated business solutions to understand the, the organization's requirement and come with a business solution. As far as our big data part, it, competency is concerned, uh, we extensively bring big, big data capabilities to our customer. We are the preferred partners with Cloudera, uh, preferred partners for global cooperation who are looking for solutions in big data management and big data analysis for the data-driven applications. We have a full line of Hadoop consulting and integration and training services which enable you to put your structure and unstructured data in action with respect to your data analysis. And uh, we uh, basically leverage uh, the powerful new data platform which is built on uh, Apache Hadoop uh, open source software package to come with the uh, solution to your problem related to the data. Uh, we are, as far as the talent is concerned, which is required for uh, putting that into the Hadoop, we are also their partners in geographies including UK, US, India, and as far as the training is considered, we are the Asia's first cloud era Hadoop certified training partner. As far as our Hadoop offerings are concerned, uh, are concerned we basically uh, 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 have Hadoop consulting services which are focused on evolving the enterprise data management and capabilities that unlock the business uh, value of uh, big data. We provide the hands-on expertise and guidance to help enterprise evolve strategies for successfully acquiring, organizing, and analyzing big data 
in order to drive real business insights to help the uh, bottom line. If you can see, we have uh, Hadoop Consulting offerings where we focus on especially on the big data strategy and the roadmap. Uh, as some organization is starting with the big data, we focus on the use uh, case discovery workshop. We also understand the organization readiness, where the organization is really ready to start with Hadoop uh, uh, practice or not. As far as the Hadoop implementation is concerned, we are into architecture definition and the selection as well as the various frameworks that are concerned. We do a rapid proof of concept. We do uh, the sort of the implementation of the entire solution and the other administration services. The basic focus is to that we have a proven track record of designing architecture roadmap for mission critical and large applications for a number of uh, Fortune 100 to set up organizations. We create big data architecture utilizing Hadoop that is extensible, high performing and integrated with other information systems. And uh, as the well Hadoop support is concerned, we also have support contracts to fully manage service contracts and training is the one thing which we have been doing for last four years and we have uh, trained large number of people in India. In fact, in, in fact uh, we can probably say that we have done training in, in every uh, SI in India, big SI in India. Uh, passing on the to, uh, small introduction on the Raghavan who is the speaker today for the webinar. Uh, Raghavan has got 17 years of experience in the IT industry and he is the Cloudera certified trainer for developer, administrator and data analyst stream and his experience covers high fake flu scoop administration hedge base. He is also familiar with the NoSQL technologies such as MongoDB and he is currently pursuing in machine learning and data sciences. Um, now I would like to pass this on to Raghavan uh, for the webinar. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Raghavan. Hello. Okay. Yeah, Raghavan, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Anurag and uh, Gaurav. Um, so, uh, welcome everyone uh, for uh, this uh, webinar on uh, predictive analytics uh, using uh, Hadoop. Uh, so, thanks uh, to everyone uh, who has taken time out uh, to attend this uh, webinar. So, what an exciting uh, way to start our uh, weekend, uh, right? Uh, learning to know how to predict, you know, trying to find out what our friends are going to do over the weekend or what our friends are going to do um, you know, uh, over uh, uh, a month, what our bosses are going to do. It is all exciting uh, to uh, predict uh, the things, right? So let's start um, uh, looking at uh, the predictive analytics uh, specifically using uh, the Hadoop. So uh, the expectation uh, from the audience uh, for this uh, webinar is that uh, they should uh, be aware of uh, the Hadoop um, uh, at its uh, basic uh, format uh, and a uh, little bit of uh, predictive analytics um, as well because this is uh, uh, more about uh, doing predictive analytics on Hadoop. Uh, so having a knowledge about um, both these areas is definitely going to help. So uh, in this uh, webinar, uh, we will see what exactly predictive analytics uh, is, though the expectation is uh, you should be knowing a little bit of predictive analytics. But let me start uh, by explaining what the predictive analytics uh, is and uh, how it is done. Uh, and uh, so we'll also discuss about uh, prediction uh, models uh, specific uh, to uh, the statistics and um, uh, predictive analytics uh, uh, discipline of uh, the analytics. And we'll also look into uh, some use cases uh, uh, which are, um, uh, you know, which leverage uh, these uh, prediction models. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, finally look into how uh, Hadoop can be utilized for implementing these um, uh, use cases and what are the ecosystem and the tools that are available um, uh, in Hadoop uh, to do these uh, things. So we'll also look at uh, some um, example workflows, what are the tools that can be used. Uh, working in Hadoop is always a little bit, um, uh, you know, uh, confusing uh, because there are so many tools. Uh, so many tools uh, doing uh, similar kind of uh, stuff, uh, so you should uh, understand these tools well and uh, choose these uh, tools. So we look at um, a couple of um, example workflows using different tools, how you can um, implement uh, various uh, prediction uh, algorithms. And the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes, we'll leave it for uh, questions and answers. So in case you have any questions specific to this uh, uh, presentation, uh, then uh, we can um, uh, discuss those questions uh, as well. 
So, um, first of all, what uh, predictive analytics uh, is, right? So, it is a BA technology that predicts uh, the outcome based on uh, the past experience. So, you have some um, uh, experience in uh, dealing with uh, certain uh, things, so let's say that, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, you see that uh, a specific kind of um, house uh, values uh, uh, some uh, amount. So, based on various uh, features. So, let's take that example and then uh, go over it. Um, if you take uh, the house uh, pricing based on uh, the square foot, right? That, that's what we do. We go to uh, various uh, uh, sites or builders and say, you know, I am looking for um, uh, you know uh, a flat of uh, this size, a thousand square foot or two thousand um, square foot or something uh, like that, and we get uh, the price based on um, the square feet uh, square feet um, rating. Right? So if it is a single builder, it is fine. But if you want to find out, uh, let's say, uh, take a city like. Uh, Bangalore, and then uh, try to predict uh, the house uh, prices in a specific uh, location. Right. So if you take uh, the simple uh, variables like I've shown in uh, the screen, where uh, you have uh, the data about uh, the square feet of uh, the flats that uh, you're looking for and the, and the price. Right. So given this uh, data, will you be able to predict uh, a new uh, house, a new house with a given uh, uh, size uh, of the square foot? Uh, and uh, predict the price, right? So let's see if uh, we can do that uh, or not. So if you try to plot this uh, data on uh, a, uh, a graph, right? So we must have seen these kind of graphs from our uh, childhood, right? So we have a graph here uh, where uh, we can uh, plot um, our uh, uh, data, uh, square feet versus uh, the price of uh, the house. Right? So if you uh, try to plot uh, this uh, data, so this is how probably you will get. Right, uh, you have um, a house, um, a thousand square foot uh, house, uh, priced at um, hundred thousand dollars approximately. Uh, another house of uh, nine hundred square feet uh, at ninety-two thousand uh, dollars. So if you try to plot these um, uh, dots, so this is how uh, we uh, will get. You know, immediately we can see there is some uh, pattern uh, here. There is some uh, pattern here. So based on this pattern, will we be able to, uh, you know? Uh, predict the price of a new house. For example, say that uh, you want to uh, purchase a house of uh, 2,200 square feet and will you be able to uh, predict what is the right price for it based on uh, this uh, data. Right? So looks like we'll be able to uh, predict. So basically, uh, looks like this is following uh, a linear uh, trend uh, like this. So if you try to plot a line uh, to these uh, data points, so this is the kind of line uh, we will get. And also, uh, we can approximately uh, say that the price is equal to 10 times uh, the square feet uh, uh, size. Right? So it has a linear uh, relationship uh, here. And um, uh, the formula that, you know, the model uh, tells us that uh, the price is uh, 10 times uh, the square feet. Uh, right? So uh, given a new house of, uh, let's say, 2,200 square feet, so the approximate price, uh, a reasonable price, is um, around uh, 220,000 uh, uh, square feet. Right? So this is how uh, we'll be able to tell um, uh, what is the price of uh, a new house. But unfortunately, um, the uh, number of variables that we get um, in real life are uh, enormous. For example, if you take the case of uh, uh, predicting the price of um, a house itself, so you will have a lot of variables. Uh, only the square feet uh, is not going to be uh, the variable uh, for you. So you might uh, consider uh, the location. You might uh, consider what kind of uh, you know, fittings, what kind of uh, uh, you know furnishings that uh, the house has, and then uh, how many bedrooms that uh, house has. Does it has balconies? Right? What is the vicinity to uh, let's say a market, uh, to a highway, or a uh, mall? Right. So all these uh, kind of factors will come into a picture. So in real life, if you take to um, uh, price a house, uh, it's a very, very complex uh, uh, thing. Uh, right. A lot of factors are going to, uh, you know, the pricing uh, the right, uh, pricing a house uh, right. Um, but, uh, you know, in the previous example that uh, we have um, uh, seen that there is a, uh, you know, near uh, linear relationship um, uh, between uh, you know, the variable and uh, the price, right? Sometimes that may not be the case. So you may have a uh, lot of um, variables, a lot of parameters uh, to predict the outcome. And then uh, the relationship between these uh, parameters, these variables as well, could be uh, nonlinear. So it could be very, very complex. So how can we uh, uh, do uh, the prediction in uh, such, such cases? So if you really see 
the relationship uh, between these various uh, variables and uh, the outcome, it could be uh, very, very uh, complex. Um, right? As here, I have shown um, a, uh, a graph, a three-dimensional uh, plot uh, for uh, uh, you know, uh, a three-variable uh, uh, function. Right? So this itself is looking so complex. Just imagine uh, you have a, uh, a, a function which depends on a thousand parameters. So that's what uh, you know the truth is. So if you want to predict the price of a house, you will have so many variables. If you want to predict the behavior of a customer, there will be so many other uh, parameters, right? Uh, the urgency that uh, he's uh, in, and uh, uh, you know uh, the discount or uh, you know the amount of uh, the budget that he has. So a lot of uh, other factors um, are, are there, which are some are uh, visible, some are uh, invisible. Right? In such cases, so how do we uh, make uh, a, 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 you know a prediction model which can uh, uh, tell what our customer uh, is going to do in uh, in the future? Right? So this is basically it is uh, not uh, the job of a programmer, but we have uh, uh, something called as a prediction uh, uh, models. Right? So what prediction uh, models uh, will uh, do is that uh, based on um, the past data, uh, which is also called as a training uh, set. So the training set defines uh, what was the outcome based on a certain uh, you know, parameters or features. They're also called as uh, features. So based on a certain uh, features or the parameters, what was the outcome in, in the past? Right? So you will have a huge collection of uh, the training data like this, and a model will look into this uh, data and uh, learn. It will learn from this data and make models. Right? So using these models, you'll be able to predict the outcome of uh, a new input. So given a new input, uh, it will be able to uh, you know, approximately uh, predict uh, what is uh, the right output uh, uh, for it. Right? So, and there are a lot of models uh, to uh, do this. Uh, linear regression is uh, one of uh, them. So the one what we applied uh, for the house uh, uh, pricing is uh, the linear uh, uh, regression. And also uh, there is uh, uh, other algorithms called as uh, classification, clustering, and uh, recommendations. Right. So uh, these uh, are used for uh, various um, other uh, predictions. Right. In, in uh, linear regression, we want to predict the outcome uh, given a set of variables. <coughs> Excuse me. But in classification, we want to uh, classify whether uh, one of the examples I can give is uh, uh, the spam uh, filtering, whether a mail is a spam or not. Right. And the clustering, clustering is uh, you know when you are uh, trying to segment your customers, let's say, uh, or uh, you know trying to uh, you know uh, say, uh, group uh, news articles. Let's say this is a political kind of article, this is sports related article, uh, and uh, so on and uh, so forth. So you uh, you should automatically cluster based on your past experience. So there are a lot of uh, algorithms uh, that uh, uh, are there, so not limited to what I listed on uh, this uh, slide. Right? So we see predictions uh, everywhere uh, today. So we are being uh, uh, predicted uh, uh, on, on a continuous um, uh, basis. Uh, so we, we are being uh, predicted by our companies, uh, the government, and uh, the healthcare uh, providers, like uh, the health insurance providers, our insurance companies, our banks, so uh, universities, so there's a lot of um, you know uh, companies, a lot of uh, groups that are trying to predict our behavior, the customer uh, behavior, uh, so that um, uh, they will be able to uh, you know sell better. They'll be able to position uh, better uh, in, um, uh, in uh, compared to the competitors. And not only that, it helps uh, the companies uh, you know, combat the financial uh, risk whether a customer um, is a good credit or not, whether a, a customer is going to fall uh, uh, sick. Right? You can uh, even predict uh, those kind of uh, things based on uh, uh, his hospital visits, based on uh, his uh, you know, uh, habits. So you'll be able to predict uh, what is the possibility of uh, a specific customer falling uh, sick uh, you know, soon. So based on that, they can uh, appropriately, uh, you know, pay, accept the risk or the price, um, the premium. So all these kind of uh, things um, uh, can be uh, uh, done. Right? So, uh, so it is happening everywhere. So you may, uh, sometimes you may get surprised, how am I getting this specific advertisement? How am I getting this specific uh, you know, promotion uh, uh, coupon? Right? So it's all uh, based on uh, the prediction, uh, predictions that are uh, going on 
based on uh, the data that uh, organizations are uh, gathering. Right. So some of the examples that I can give uh, is uh, Amazon, Amazon.com. Whenever you go there, so based on your um, past purchases uh, or uh, the groups that you are associated with, so it will give you some recommendations. You may be interested in uh, these um, uh, books as well. Uh, if your friend purchased uh, this book, you may also be interested. Right? You have purchased uh, uh, you know, a razor. Uh, you may need a blade. Right? So. Uh, no, it, it will recommend uh, based on uh, uh, the past experience as well as uh, uh, the things that you are doing currently as well. So maybe it's real-time predictions as well as uh, uh, you know offline uh, actual internet predictions um, as well. So this is uh, a typical recommendation um, uh, uh, algorithm that is applied uh, on uh, Amazon, and uh, there is also uh, a classification um, algorithm which um, can say whether a uh, mail, whether, whether an email is uh, a spam or uh, not a spam, right? And then, uh, so we also have uh, uh, clustering, right, in um, governments and in uh, you know, companies. So you uh, segment your uh, customers, segment your uh, population uh, to uh, specifically target, right, uh, saying that, you know, this uh, group is a, a high-income uh, group, uh, low education, or low education, uh, a low income uh, group. So based on that, so you will be able to uh, sell or suggest the right products um, uh, for them and uh, be able to uh, you know, sell better uh, to your uh, uh, customers and sell better uh, to your customers. So these are some of, uh, some of uh, the samples of uh, the predictions uh, that uh, are happening uh, uh, in our current world. Right. But uh, you know the important thing uh, for uh, these uh, predictions is uh, the data, right? So oh, how how are the predictions are uh, being uh, made? You have uh, some uh, experience uh, data in your uh, you know uh, data uh, base, uh, right? So uh, which uh, says that uh, you know these kind of parameters have led to uh, this kind of uh, outcome. So you have a huge collection of uh, the uh, samples which are called as uh, the training. Uh, data so based on this you are uh, you know evolving uh, a model based on uh, the uh, algorithms that uh, were mentioned uh, before and then uh, using that model you are trying to predict uh, the new outcome right? so it's very uh, important that you have the right uh, set of uh, the training uh, data right so uh, the more uh, and also you should have sufficient uh, uh, data to uh, you know, train your model, to create your uh, model. If you don't have sufficient data, and your uh, prediction uh, might uh, might go wrong. If it, let's say if you just have uh, two, three uh, sample uh, data, your prediction uh, may not come uh, uh, very very well. So it may uh, you know fall off uh, the line uh, from the reality. So the more data you have, the better prediction you will be able to uh, do. Right. Uh, so uh, you know, so how to how to collect uh, this uh, data? How to uh, uh, you know uh, make sure that uh, it is of uh, right type that uh, we are uh, looking for? We'll uh, look in uh, the next uh, uh, slide. Right. So, but the important thing is you have to have uh, the training data and uh, the enough uh, training data so that your model will be able to predict uh, uh, better. So it is said uh, in uh, several um, uh, predictive analytics uh, discussion discussions that uh, the more data. Uh, will be uh, able to give better results or beat the best of uh, the algorithms even with um, the simple uh, algorithms. So, you know, so the, having uh, enough data and, um, uh, you know, uh, the good the data is very important uh, in predictive uh, analytics. Right. So, uh, so, here is an example of uh, uh, a prediction uh, done uh, with, uh, with the, the data and uh, with the various uh, algorithms, so like uh, you can see, uh, as the data volumes um, increase, uh, the number of uh, the words that uh, we have uh, here uh, uh, increase, uh, their prediction accuracy uh, is more or less becoming uh, the same. So remember that the more complex the algorithm is, so more uh, uh, resources it is going to take, more time it is going to uh, take. So you can use a simple algorithm and then use a lot of data to uh, get the performance uh, benefits as well as uh, the prediction, uh, accurate predictions uh, as well. 
So uh, now, what role Hadoop has uh, in it? So uh, whatever we have um, discussed uh, so far is independent of uh, the Hadoop. It's more related to uh, you know the statistics and the mathematics uh, field. So given um, a set of uh, the data, how do you uh, create a model out of it? Or uh, in other terms, if I say that uh, given a set of uh, the data, uh, how do you uh, create a formula? Right. So even if you take uh, uh, some of uh, the famous uh, physics uh, equations like uh, f is equal to m a e is equal to uh, m c square, so these are not uh, these formulas are made from the data. So these are also prediction models, uh, if you uh, frankly uh, speak. So based on the data that scientists have collected, they have formulated uh, uh, this. Right. So those are basically the models which are independent of the Hadoop. Uh, so what role Hadoop has uh, in this uh, predictive uh, analytics um, uh, world? Right. So on the previous uh, slide, uh, we have um, discussed that having uh, enough uh, data and um, the reliable data is very uh, important. Uh, right. If you have um, less uh, data, your prediction uh, uh, is not going to be uh, correct. Uh, right, so you have to have uh, enough for the sample data. It's also important to have enough data because we discussed on previous slides that uh, you will have uh, enormous parameters. So there are uh, some of uh, uh, you know uh, the functions where you can even find uh, 10,000 um, uh, parameters. Right, so if you have to predict with uh, so many parameters with um, certain accuracy, so you need to have a lot of uh, the data. Uh, which indicate the behavior of uh, a particular um, uh, function or uh, environment uh, based on uh, uh, you know various variations of uh, these uh, uh, parameters. So it's very important uh, to have a uh, uh, lot of uh, data, huge data uh, for doing um, the predictive um, uh, analysis. So, so when we are talking about uh, the uh, lot of data, so we should have the ability to store it. We should have the ability to process uh, this uh, data, so which is very important. So, which Hadoop can uh, provide, right? So, if you look at Hadoop, Hadoop is uh, a popular big data platform, and it can store petabytes of uh, data at a very um, uh, cheaper uh, price, uh, at a very low, uh, uh, you know, uh, per gigabyte uh, price. And it's reliable. It's not only cheaper, but it, it is reliable as well uh, with its uh, fault tolerance uh, mechanisms that are built. And also, it has um, uh, the ability to uh, process uh, the data in a distributed parallel um, way, so which makes um, large amounts of uh, data uh, to be processed um, at a, a very cheaper price uh, and as well as uh, efficiently. Right. So if you look at, um, I assume that you are already familiar with the Hadoop um, uh, you know, fundamentally and uh, what um, kind of features and uh, tools that Hadoop ecosystem has. So just for uh, the benefit, I just um, uh, repeat uh, here. So Hadoop basically has a storage uh, system, which is uh, the HDFS. It is a distributed storage, so which means that you put some data into the HDFS. So it will be distributed and stored on uh, the cluster of uh, the computers. Right. And it also has uh, the you know the uh, the modern the latest version of the Hadoop also has uh, a resource management um, layer called as uh, Yon. And on top of which you have various uh, frameworks like uh, you have uh, the MapReduce uh, using which you'll be able to run uh, uh, the develop and the run programs uh, in the MapReduce which is uh, more batch oriented. And also we have uh, the Spark framework which uh, can run on um, Yon apart from uh, other uh, frameworks uh, that uh, it supports. Um, so uh, using Spark, uh, not only uh, you can do uh, uh, the batch oriented processing, but also you can do uh, stream oriented processing, the real time processing, uh, in memory processing as well. Uh, you can do and so like that. You you have a lot of uh, tools and ecosystem in uh, Hadoop, uh, which uh, can work together to process uh, the huge data that uh, we talked about. So the top stack, I did not give any names because um, you know, there are a lot of uh, things uh, which are uh, higher level abstractions like Big Hive. Uh, and then uh, Spark uh, independent libraries. So uh, some of these things are interoperable as well. Uh, for example, if you think you can Hive, they can um, uh, work on, uh, for example, Hive uh, can work uh, with the HBase um, uh, as well. Uh, so I really did not uh, want to name uh, those uh, layers. So th this is what the Hadoop can do and um, the, you know, the ecosystem that uh, uh, we have. 
So uh, speaking the, uh, specifically about uh, the predictive analytics, what kind of support uh, the Hadoop uh, provides? So if you look at uh, the Hadoop, uh, we have an uh, enormous uh, set of um, the support and the tools for uh, predictive analytics. Uh, we have uh, Mahout, which was um, uh, probably the first uh, machine learning uh, framework on uh, the Hadoop, uh, which is a Java library of uh, this uh, you know, machine learning uh, algorithms uh, like uh, regression and then um, uh, clustering, classification, all these things are implemented. You basically have to pass the data and call the respective uh, library and you will be, uh, you will get back uh, the model uh, uh, to you for your prediction. So we also have the, the solar. Solar is not uh, really a machine uh, learning or uh, the predictive analytic, uh, analytics tool, but you can use this um, in combination with other tools uh, like uh, Mahout or uh, uh, other tools uh, so that you can index and do uh, real-time uh, analytics, but it's not really a uh, uh, machine learning uh, tool. And uh, the uh, latest uh, addition to uh, the Hadoop, uh, which is uh, the Spark, Spark has um, uh, also enormous uh, support for uh, the machine uh, learning. It has a separate um, uh, framework called as uh, ML lib using which you'll be able to uh, run machine learning um, uh, algorithms um, on it. Uh, and also uh, R, R also is um, a very beautiful um, uh, tool, one of uh, the favorite tool for uh, data analysts as well as uh, uh, data scientists uh, uh, today. Uh, which has enormous uh, support for this uh, modeling. So we also have integration with um, the Hadoop um, uh, uh, through various uh, means. You can um, run our programs uh, through Hadoop uh, streaming. There is a framework called as a Big R, using which you will be able to uh, write uh, map uh, programs. And then uh, Spark has a separate uh, a framework for supporting R, uh, which is uh, a Spark R. And also there are uh, other commercial um, uh, tools um, as well, for example, um, uh, Scala R uh, is uh, supported by uh, a tool called as Revolution R, which is also getting uh, popular. And there are a few uh, other commercial tools like uh, Skytree, uh, which is commercial uh, and non-open source. It's not an open source um, uh, tool, but it implements uh, most of uh, the predictive analytics um, uh, analytic, um, algorithms uh, in it. So this is a kind of uh, support what we have uh, for predictive analytics uh, in uh, the Hadoop uh, ecosystem. So now if you look at uh, the, uh, the common uh, Hadoop um, analytics uh, flow in uh, Hadoop, uh, what exactly uh, happens, so this is how uh, it uh, looks like. Right? So you have uh, various data sources on left, uh, it could be streams or it could be some of your operational databases or it could be your uh, REST services from which you can pull the data, right? And then you can, uh, 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 you can pull this uh, data using various uh, tools like Flu, uh, which supports, uh, uh, which supports uh, the streaming the data sources, and then Scoop, uh, which supports uh, your operational databases uh, running on um, RDBMS, uh, right? And then um, uh, NFS uh, can have uh, your other uh, uh, data files, uh, probably the uh, internally generated uh, uh, you know, data files uh, can be there on uh, NFS. Right? So we use various tools and then um, uh, st uh, uh, we ingest the data into the Hadoop uh, platform uh, which will uh, sit in uh, HDFS and then uh, using uh, various uh, means you can analyze uh, this uh, uh, data. You can use uh, SQL engines uh, uh, like, uh, you know, which interface uh, with uh, tools like uh, Hive using uh, ODBC or JDBC kind of uh, connectivities and then um, uh, generate uh, the reports. And also, uh, you'll be able to uh, do uh, real-time uh, uh, analytics uh, as well uh, using uh, this data using uh, the tools uh, like uh, Spark and uh, uh, Solar uh, as well. Right. So this is how a typical workflow uh, looks like in uh, the Hadoop uh, analytics uh, uh, world. Right. Sometimes uh, uh, your data uh, will also be uh, ingested or exported into uh, your enterprise um, uh, data uh, warehouses as well, uh, so that uh, your business uh, intelligence uh, tools, your high value reports uh, will be able to uh, uh, run directly from uh, your data warehouses and uh, maps. 
Right. So uh, now one of uh, the point what uh, we uh, discussed um, is that you need to have uh, enough uh, data and uh, the right data, right data in the sense that um, you know uh, if you are filtering uh, a uh, you know mails as uh, spam or not spam, you should have uh, the right training the data. Now, given a uh, mail, you should be able to um, say you, you have to tag it saying that yes, this is a spam. This is not a spam. Right? So this is uh, what is uh, the training set. You have to have enough examples like this uh, to uh, for your um, model uh, to learn from uh, this uh, you know, collection of uh, emails, and it will be able to predict uh, a future uh, email whether it is a uh, spam uh, or not. Right. So how are you going to uh, tag millions of uh, mails um, uh, as uh, uh, you know spam or uh, not uh, spam? So one of uh, the you know technique that is used uh, in the industry is uh, use uh, crowdsourcing. Uh, right. Uh, you uh, can get your uh, work done uh, through various um, you know crowdsourcing uh, forums like Amazon, uh, uh, Turk. Uh, so there are a lot of other uh, forums uh, from there. You can get your work done. Uh, especially the tagging of your um, you know, uh, resources, tagging of your training uh, uh, data at a, a very cheaper uh, price. So you can use um, uh, crowdsourcing and then use obvious uh, features. So we discussed about uh, the features. Features are uh, the ones uh, which are uh, which predict uh, based on their values, they predict the value or they decide the, the outcome of uh, that uh, specific uh, uh, thing. So for example, if you uh, consider a house, uh, the features of the house could be the size of the house and then the location of the house like that there could be several uh, uh, you know uh, features so so when you're taking a business uh, scenario or a specific um, you know, use case so you have to decide uh, what features are the right uh, features what features um, are uh, not uh, correct so uh, you know, one of the suggestion is uh, use obvious uh, features uh, so that uh, you know your model uh, uh, will not get uh, too complicated, and you, you will also understand the behavior uh, easily. And also, uh, another important thing is that use the feedback uh, from uh, the user uh, behavior. Sometimes, even model or the data that you have, uh, you know, will have some uh, uh, short uh, faults. So it may not have certain behaviors of the user. So always uh, uh, take the uh, feedback to the user behavior, and uh, you know that will uh, you know give you more data for your training uh, data set. Okay, this particular scenario there is a deviation from the prediction. So you can use that, add that to your training uh, data set. So thereby your future predictions, future models uh, will become uh, uh, better and learn from. Uh, this specific uh, feedback that user is uh, providing. So these are some of uh, uh, the techniques uh, and um, you know, uh, thumb rules uh, for uh, getting and using uh, the big uh, you know, training data. So um, you know, at the end, I would like to uh, show you a couple of uh, examples uh, or uh, you know the sample workflows using uh, the Hadoop um, uh, ecosystem. How you can implement uh, the predictive, uh, predictive uh, models. Uh, in um, Hadoop. Um, now here we have uh, a recommendation uh, system using uh, Mahout and uh, Solar. Uh, like I said, the Solar is um, a indexing uh, tool in the Hadoop uh, ecosystem. Uh, so thereby, uh, you know, the searching will become searching on uh, the big data uh, will become uh, uh, easier. Right. So here uh, we can use uh, Mahout for uh, the heavy number uh, crunching. So thereby, um, we have uh, uh, you know all the historical data that we have, uh, either it could be log files or uh, anything. So they can be crunched, and then uh, the co-occurrence. So for recommendation, you have to uh, have the co-occurrence. What are the things that uh, you know uh, users uh, do together, or buy together, or uh, you know uh, you know uh, purchase uh, uh, together, right? So this this is called as uh, co-occurrence. Uh, so the co-occurrence uh, can be uh, calculated. Typically, it is um, uh, done uh, using the recommendation algorithm. Uh, so this uh, can be uh, executed on the Mahout on um, the data set that we have on uh, the HDFS. And then this can be uh, fed into the uh, solar for uh, indexing. So basically, the indexing will contain uh, uh, things uh, uh, like you know, uh, 
things that co-occur together. For example, a person who is uh, buying a uh, you know, pen is going to uh, buy uh, some ink also uh, together. So it is very, very simple that the example what I am telling. But there could be very, very complex uh, things, so which can be uh, pre-computed and then be pushed into your um, uh, solar uh, indexing. So then by uh, in future, uh, if we want to access, we'll be able to access it. So, uh, so we, we use the Mahout for the heavy number crunching here, and then uh, solar uh, for uh, for for indexing. So once uh, we do that, uh, in uh, you know when, when the user comes in for uh, you know purchasing something or browsing your uh, website, so you will be able to uh, based on what uh, based on the user action at that uh, point, like what is uh, purchasing or what is uh, browsing. Based on that, you will be able to uh, search in uh, your uh, solar uh, uh, system using uh, the solar index, and then get the relevant uh, recommendations for it, and then display that along with uh, uh, display it on the user's uh, page, so that you know you will also recommend the related uh, uh, things uh, to them. Right. So this is how we can use uh, Mahout and uh, Solar uh, for uh, doing uh, the recommendations. So uh, you can also use uh, the Spark uh, independently uh, for, um, uh, so let's say, uh, logistic regression, which is uh, used for uh, classification uh, typically. Uh, and also it can be used for many other um, uh, things. Right? So once again, uh, we have uh, the data in uh, HDFS. So you can use um, the Scala or Python. You can use Python as well uh, on uh, Spark. It supports uh, both these uh, languages. So you can use um, uh, uh, Scala or uh, Python for pre-processing uh, your uh, data and feature generation. So remember that uh, the feature generation is an important thing in, uh, uh, in predictive um, analytics uh, uh, workflow because when you get the data uh, from uh, your, let's say, web logs or from your blogs or from uh, any other source, you don't know what uh, features um, it has. Right, so you have to generate the features uh, as part of your um, uh, processing at uh, one stage. Uh, so you can use scale up for um, that. You can pre-process the cleaning up of uh, the data and the feature generations. Once you have the feature generation, then uh, you can use um, the ML uh, lib of uh, the spot uh, for uh, doing the logistic uh, regression or um, other algorithms like uh, uh, SVM. Uh, you can uh, uh, use um, and then this can be pushed um, either onto a data model or uh, or into the Hadoop uh, itself, HDF itself, itself you can uh, store which can be later um, either accessed by uh, the BA tools or web applications uh, for uh, using uh, this uh, data for report generation or uh, you know, recommendations um, uh, as well of course uh, you know uh, the classification, uh, the logistic regression is not suitable for recommendations, but you'll be able to uh, see the groups, right, based on the groups, okay, this uh, specific group um, has this kind of characteristics, so what is the right thing uh, uh, for uh, this uh, specific uh, group? So that way you'll be able to, uh, you know, suggest the right uh, things uh, for uh, your, uh, uh, that specific user uh, group. So this, this basically uh, brings us uh, to the brief, um, uh, you know, introduction uh, to uh, uh, the predictive analytics uh, using uh, the Hadoop. Uh, you know, uh, but not limited to what we discussed uh, here. There are several other other uh, tools uh, that uh, uh, we have. Like you can use uh, uh, Strom for um, uh, you know doing real-time predictive uh, analytics along with uh, the other libraries that uh, we have. Uh, like R, you can use uh, R uh, extensively for doing. Um, uh, you know, predictive um, analytics. Um, so there are a lot of other tools that uh, for you to go and uh, explore and find uh, the suitable tools uh, for uh, your specific uh, use case. So, so thanks for listening. So um, I will open it up uh, for uh, question and answers now. Thanks, Raghavan, for such an insightful presentation. Let us quickly take up question now. I request you to please read out question first before answering them. So all of all our users may listen to the commendable insights. So, uh, hello. Yeah, I hope you can uh, hear me. So there's a question, uh, which is the best tool used for predictive analytics um, in uh, Hadoop. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a very tough question uh, to answer um, uh, today. 
uh, because there are a lot of uh, tools uh, like uh, we just discussed. Uh, you have uh, the tools like uh, Mahot, we have uh, uh, specific libraries on uh, the Spark, you have uh, one of the favorite uh, tool um, like uh, R, uh, uh, which is a uh, uh, very uh, good tool from a statistics uh, perspective. Uh, so it's very difficult to say. You have to choose based on uh, the use case that you have. For example, you have uh, the real-time use case. Uh, then uh, you have to go uh, with a combination of uh, either uh, uh, you know uh, strong or um, you know solar kind of uh, the thing, uh, along with uh, your analytical uh, tool like R. Um, uh, or uh, Spark uh, MDIP uh, kind of uh, the thing. Uh, also, you know, sometimes you have to make a decision based on uh, the skill set that is uh, available uh, within your uh, organization. Suppose um, uh, you have uh, more of, uh, let's say, uh, Python programmers, then uh, you might uh, prefer the Spark. Uh, or you have, let's say, experienced uh, R programmers, then you might uh, prefer uh, uh, R in combination with uh, other uh, tools that. Uh, uh, no, so other tools that uh, Hadoop offers. So there is uh, another question uh, here: Do we need to buy Hadoop, or uh, we need to uh, programming uh, for uh, uh, developing the Hadoop? So the question is not very clear. But however, um, you know, uh, I um, you know uh, understand that. Uh, uh, whether uh, we um, uh, need to program completely or we need to purchase a ready-made uh, solution. So if uh, my understanding is uh, correct, uh, you need to program a lot. Right? You have to set up a Hadoop, you get the Hadoop as a, a you know, uh, in, in its a basic uh, format which we need to set it up and then uh, configure all these tools to integrate and then uh, you have to go and uh, program uh, you know, based on the tools that uh, you have uh, uh, chosen. Okay, so there is another interesting question. Um, the Hadoop is a software or uh, the hardware, right? So it is a software. Uh, it's a software uh, which uh, can uh, do uh, distributed uh, pandem uh, processing, uh, and it, it can run on uh, any kind of uh, the hardware. Of course, um, you know, most of the times it is referred to as uh, the commodity hardware, right? It is not a hardware. Okay, so there's a question here uh, that uh, uh, Hadoop can be used to import data into uh, warehouse, uh, data warehouse. Uh, so does Hadoop provide any uh, tools? Um, yes, Hadoop provides uh, the tools um, like we discussed on one of uh, the slide, how you can uh, bring data into uh, the Hadoop. Uh, you know, or uh, take data out of uh, the Hadoop uh, as well. So there is uh, there is a tool called as uh, Scoop, uh, which is um, uh, which actually is uh, the short form for uh, a SQL uh, to Hadoop. Uh, so this tool, using this tool, you can bring in data from uh, an RDBMS um, into Hadoop as well as from uh, the HDFS uh, data uh, uh, HDFS uh, storage into a data warehouse uh, as well, assuming that uh, it is a RDBMS. Uh, data store. Yeah, so there's a question here that can we use a SAS um, or, or with the Hadoop? Uh, exactly, uh, so that is what uh, I discussed uh, towards the end of uh, this uh, the presentation. Uh, SAS has its own connector, uh, so I, uh, I do not uh, have the complete idea about how SAS uh, works with Hadoop, but R has uh, several ways of um, uh, you know, uh, working with the, the Hadoop, or can uh, work with the Hadoop uh, in uh, using Hadoop streaming, where it uh, runs as a distributed process, but independent processes uh, uh, by interfacing the, the Hadoop through standard input and standard uh, output. Uh, so that is one way. The other way is uh, it has um, another uh, you know uh, MapReduce compatible library called as uh, Big R using which we will be able to run uh, distributed programs using the, the R language uh, itself. And then uh, there are other ways of integrating R with um, uh, uh, your, uh, the Hadoop uh, using uh, Spark R. Uh, and then uh, there, there are a lot of uh, other connectors uh, provided uh, by uh, some of the commercial tools like uh, Oracle, uh, Netiza uh, as well. So yes, R is very well supported uh, on uh, the Hadoop uh, platform. But you need to do a little bit of uh, work on um, you know, uh, of uh, integration.
So there's another uh, question, how is uh, indexing and the co-occurrence uh, inter interconnected? Uh, it is not uh, really uh, interconnected, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, yes and uh, no. So the co-occurrence, uh, uh, you know, the algorithm, what it is uh, doing, so you bought, let's say, an apple, right, you bought an apple, based on the data, the training data that I have, what is what are the other things that are suitable recommendations for that user? So a person who bought, purchased an apple may also buy an orange, right? Or uh, you can also say that uh, a person uh, who uh, purchased, um, uh, let's say, a, a pant may also uh, purchase um, you know, something else like, uh, you know, say, a, a bat. Which, is, which are totally unrelated, but that is the kind of um, you know insights that uh, you would uh, get. So, but you know this this you don't run every time, right? Whenever the user comes in, you don't run this uh, co-occurrence algorithm uh, every time. So you do this, and then you know at that point of time, based on the training data set that you have, uh, at that point of time, you can say that a person uh, you know purchased a certain thing uh, may also be interested in other things like uh, you know B, C, D, E, or something uh, like that. So, so this is the what the indexing data that um, I talked about. So, a person purchased A, he may be interested in B, C, D. A person, a person who purchased, let's say, uh, X, he may be interested in um, uh, M, N, O, P, something like that, right? So, when I have this uh, data, I don't need to go and uh, do uh, the uh, co-occurrence algorithm again and again. So, when the user comes uh, in real time, I can just uh, you know query this uh, index and then uh, present uh, the appropriate uh, recommendations uh, uh, at that point immediately uh, based on um, you know the indexing that was done uh, in the past. So uh, we have a few more uh, queries. Uh, so can you uh, uh, suggest a reference book for um, the big uh, data? Uh, my, uh, if you are a beginner, my uh, recommendation is always uh, to read uh, uh, Hadoop, uh, the definitive guide. Uh, but if uh, you are uh, an analyst uh, who is comfortable with, uh, uh, say, um, you know, uh, who is comfortable with the SQL kind of uh, things, then I would uh, I would uh, recommend uh, the other books, uh, maybe uh, programming uh, with Peak, and there is another book called as programming uh, Hive uh, as well. But if you, you are comfortable with the Java and you want to understand the architecture, how do the definitive guide is uh, the best book? So uh, here there is another uh, interesting question. Can we implement uh, the Hadoop on uh, Windows platform using uh, C Sharp? Yes, definitely you can uh, do that. Uh, on uh, Windows, it is not uh, supported uh, by Apache, but uh, Hortonbox uh, has a, spe a specific release for uh, the Windows, Hadoop on uh, uh, Windows, and uh, you can program uh, using uh, C Sharp uh, there. It is support In fact, C Sharp is supported on um, uh, normal uh, Apache Hadoop um, as well using uh, an interface uh, API called as uh, Hadoop uh, Pipes. Uh, using Hadoop Pipes, uh, yes, you'll be able to program uh, in any uh, 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 format of uh, Hadoop. Can predictive analysis um, uh, be used for uh, the human um, emotions? Uh, in fact, uh, yes. So how exactly? I don't have enough information. Uh, but um, I was, uh, you know, going through an article a couple of uh, days um, uh, back. Uh, so which uh, says whether um, it can uh, say based on what you are typing, the kind of um, words that you are, uh, you know, or, or writing. Right, it's not a single sentence, but you know, if you take uh, the recent um, uh, sample, maybe a paragraph or uh, you know something like that, uh, and you have uh, let's say uh, some of your previous uh, uh, you know written uh, samples, you'll be able to do uh, uh, modeling and say that what kind of emotion that uh, user has at the point of uh, the time. Um, so yeah, it has, it has gone much beyond uh, that uh, uh, nowadays, uh, beyond the human uh, emotions. Uh, so uh, there is another interesting question. Can I use traditional um, uh, BI tools with uh, Hadoop uh, like uh, Click View, uh, Spot Fire, um, uh, Tableau? Yes, you can uh, use. Uh, it's very easy nowadays uh, for BI tools uh, to integrate with uh, 
integrate with uh, the Hadoop because uh, the tools uh, such as uh, the Hive uh, provides uh, the JDBC or uh, ODBC uh, connectivity. So thereby, uh, they just need to, uh, the tools will treat uh, the Hive or the Hadoop or data source like any other uh, uh, ODBC or JDBC uh, source, they really do not uh, differentiate. So you just need to have uh, the right uh, driver and then uh, you will be able to access uh, query the data using the, these uh, tools uh, as well. So uh, I'll take uh, one more question uh, and then I will call it a day. Okay, so other than MapReduce, uh, any other options uh, to crunch uh, the data in uh, uh, Java? Uh, so in uh, Java, uh, no, at this uh, point of uh, the time, other than uh, MapReduce, uh, uh, you uh, don't have. Um, so if you, if you want to stick to Java uh, to crunch your data, yes, you have to depend on uh, MapReduce uh, at this uh, point of uh, time. Um, alternately, you have other uh, other frameworks. If you uh, go to, uh, let's say, uh, Spark, if you're using uh, the uh, Spark, Spark can support uh, um, other uh, languages uh, such as uh, Python uh, and then uh, Scala is supported. Even Java is supported uh, uh, there right, uh, with uh, Scala. Okay, so I think uh, you know the question that uh, uh, if you want to process the data using Java, yes, you can uh, do that uh, using uh, uh, Spark uh, as well. Spark also supports uh, uh, Java. So, um, so other questions, I will um, uh, take a look um, offline and then I'll try to provide the answers uh, uh, maybe in a couple of uh, days. So, thanks once again uh, uh, for uh, your time. Um, uh, so hope this was uh, useful uh, for you and then uh, you'll be able to, I, I wish uh, all the best uh, uh, for your uh, further uh, learning in uh, Eric Tivonal Gates. Thanks. Are you there? Yeah. Thanks Raghavan. I'm really thankful to our guest speaker for conducting this webinar and taking so many questions. It was really a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for making this webinar a success. The recording of this webinar will be available on our website, that is techic.com, by tomorrow. Thank you all.